well, good morning, you brave souls uh, who set your alarm clock and got organized early to be here for the first session. There are two, actually, there are, in word camps, is this the first word camp for anyone? Okay, welcome. Yeah, okay, yes. So there are coveted spots, speaker spots in WordPress, and then there are the ones where you're like, oh, I hope my audience is awake. The first session of the morning, the session directly after lunch, and the last session of the day are usually when folks are the most uh, fatigued. So thank you for being bright-eyed and here this morning. So, uh, <coughs> so we're talking about internationalizing code this morning in just as a, as a start, um, here at WordCamp Europe, I'm sure there are more than one language represented in the room. Uh, would anyone like to volunteer just to say, hello, my name is, whatever your name is, uh, I love WordCamps and your language, a non-English language, Thank you. What language? Uh, it's was Turkish. Turkish, okay. Anybody else? All right. And language? Uh, Czech. Czech, all right. <coughs> and Toby. Ah, okay, thank you. Um, so as y'all have brilliantly demonstrated for me, WordPress is a global phenomenon. Um, it, we'll, we'll talk more about some, some interesting stats here, or what I think are interesting stats here in a second. But just to get started, how many of you have ever seen a bit of code, PHP, or maybe some JavaScript that looks like this? Uh, some, that double underscore, <laughs> followed by some text, or maybe you see it presented with the slug of a theme or a plugin. Um, here's maybe a more realistic example uh, in the context. This is a function that registers a custom post type. <clears throat> and as part of the arguments for that custom post type, we have the label, and again, you see that double underscore function uh, containing a string followed by the plugin's slug. So have you ever written code that looked like that? Perfect. Uh, and you don't have to raise your hand, but if you have copy and pasted a snippet you found on the internet, <laughs> and maybe it had this, but you weren't sure what that actually was, uh, no shame in that. I've copy and pasted a lot of code. Um, well, if you didn't know, I'll tell you, that is a translation function. Uh, the double underscore is one of the most commonly used translation functions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so it's entirely possible you've already been working with translation functions and didn't even know it. Uh, so before we go any further, this is a link to the slide deck I'm using. Uh, you're welcome to whatever learning style is best for you. <coughs> Pardon me. I've got my cough drops, but... And it's not cooties, it's just allergies. Okay, everybody good? Perfect. <coughs> so before we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what we'll talk about in our time together. Um, we're keeping this fairly high level, even though it's a workshop, 50 minutes is not a real long time. <coughs> Excuse me, so first, what is inter internationalization? Why should we care about it? Uh, what is localization? And also, what is it not? A quick introduction to something called Git text. Um, and then a big picture overview of what this whole internationalization and localization uh, <clears throat> process looks like. We'll look at some common translation functions. I'll show you how it works, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, <coughs> by actually loading in some translations and showing you some resources. So if that doesn't sound exciting, you're not a developer. Or maybe if, it, well, yeah, we're nerdy here, so that's okay. 
Um, so internationalization, sometimes abbreviated I-18N, 18 being the number of letters between the I and the N. This is what makes a WordPress accessible for users who don't speak English. Or, <clears throat> um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that for, for a moment. So some fun facts for you. This is, may not surprise anyone, but WordPress currently powers over 40% of the web. I think at last glance it was about 43%. <coughs> Less than 5% of the world, and these are links, if you're following along in the slides, there's sources to where this data comes from. Um, less than 5% of the world speaks English as a first language. Um, less than 13% of the world speaks English, period. And then if we look at the number of WordPress installs, so think about 43% of the web. That's a lot. That's millions of websites. And of those, over 55% are not in English. Um, so I hope that just kind of underscores the importance and the need for writing code, in, <coughs> excuse me, in a way that's translatable. So localization. So if internationalization is the process of writing code so that it can be translated, localization is the process of actually breaking that down and translating it into different locales. Um, <coughs> it's got a similar abbreviation, L10N, where 10 is the number of letters between the L and the N. Um, WordPress has, WordPress is open source software, and one of the teams that makes WordPress are the polyglots, and they are responsible for translating WordPress into over 200 locales. I think somewhere around 70 are fully, fully complete. Um, and that's just WordPress core, and then maybe some, <coughs> some of the themes uh, and plugins that are created by Automatic, so like the, the 20, or, or the WordPress organization, so uh, like the 23, 22 themes, um, those themes. Um, so localization is not, this is a common misconception, but this is not the process of translating your website content for their languages. These will be the strings <clears throat> that are actually appearing in, in the code. So if you think about the law, if you go to WP Admin, you see the log, login screen. It's got username, password, a little link that says lost your password. If you go look in the WordPress code base, those are hard-coded strings in English. Um, so theoretically, if you wanted to translate that into a different language, you would have to go edit the source file, uh, and we all know that that is a big no-no. <clears throat> so back in the day, uh, Sun Microsystems created this system called GitText, which is a kind of universal standard for writing code in a way that makes it easy to extract those strings for translation without having to necessarily copy the code base over. <clears throat> Now, WordPress has its own special functions that serve as a wrapper for Git text, uh, so you'll never actually use the Git text function, but just as a, a bit of history. Uh, and Git text works in conjunction with something called a text domain. And this probably looks familiar if you've ever looked at the header of a, a plugin or a theme. <coughs> and the text domain is basically what designates all translatable strings that belong to that code package, uh, so that later on, when it comes to the time to uh, pull out those strings. I like to think of the text domain as like a vacuum cleaner that just all the, all the strings that belong to uh, a particular theme or plugin package. <clears throat> okay, I'm about to lay on you the most impressive slide of the presentation, so I hope you're, you're ready for it. Okay, so let's say we have a string of text, hello world. Uh, and that is written into my theme or plugin, um, and I wrap it in a translation function. What that means is that, again, that vacuum cleaner, <clears throat> I really am sorry for all the noises. Um, all of those strings that can be translated are translated in something called a pot or portable object template file. From there, we kick over to the localization side, and translators, like maybe some of the folks in this room, take that, <clears throat> translate it, 
translate it into the locale of their choice. This ends up in a PO or portable objects file. And then, and that's a human readable file. And then at runtime, based on whether we're working with PHP or JavaScript, uh, those are parsed out into machine readable files, uh, machine, object, <clears throat> machine object file for PHP translations and JSON files for JavaScript translations. And then the user would see whatever language <clears throat> they have their WordPress locale set to use. Uh, so I hope you are all duly impressed with that slide. I'll, I'll, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> I might even show you again. <laughs> okay, so we talked about that double underscore uh, is a, the most commonly used translation function, and that returns uh, a translated string. And then we've got its sister function, the underscore e, that echoes a translated string. So, uh, for example, based on what your, your use case was, uh, for the double underscore, maybe you're setting that to a variable then you would need to echo that if you actually wanted to print it to the screen. <clears throat> Whereas the underscore E uh, would, these two do the identical thing, it actually would print uh, that word login to the page. Then if we get into talking about escaping data, we've got special translation functions just for that. And there's a link in the slide if you're not familiar with what it means to escape data, uh, you can read a, a little bit more about that. But the corresponding, so we got the double underscore, escape HTML double underscore that would return an escaped value, uh, and then the same thing, it's counterpoint with the underscore E for echoing. Add to that, uh, we get a couple more. So think about if you're looking at strings that might appear in a code base, um, let's think of comments or something that might commonly appear on WordPress. So think about a translation for one comment. There are, or there is one comment versus there are two comments. So the language changes based on the number present. Um, there might be other instances where a language, the sentence structure varies. So when you, you want translators to have the flexibility to add a translation, that makes sense in their language. So we've got translation functions that cover a number of use cases. Um, so like the underscore in, uh, that's if we're dealing with numeric values, like the comment, the one comment versus two comments. We've got the underscore x, which, Toby, I'm, are you gonna talk about this one tomorrow? He's got a session tomorrow if you want to deeper dive uh, on, on this. Um, that's at 11. 11 o'clock track two um, tomorrow. Uh, and I, I think it has the word internationalization or I-18 in, in, the, in the title. So look, look out for that. Um, so the underscore X returns a string with context. So imagine um, the word lead in English. Uh, that could mean I am leading you in this session. It could mean I, it's a leash for my dog. Uh, there's different, different translations for a single word. And the underscore X allows you to provide context for the person that's on the translating end. Yes. something like that? <laughs> yes, exactly. And you might not, I don't, I'm trying to think of a use case when you might have crocodile tears in your code, but I want you to write the plugin that uses that. And yeah. Listen, when I get to develop you guys, it's going to be some epic code. Oh, but that, but, but yes, if there are idioms or uh, it's a way to let translators know what it is that you're trying to communicate. If you are writing about crocodile tears, then probably you would rather use the um, uh, translator's comment, but you have that later on, I guess. I'm saving that for your session. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, uh, but 
yes, when you have a word that can have different meanings, so typically when you have very short strings, uh, where there is a risk that there may be, <coughs> well, I mean, you may have different cases all already in your code, because the exact source string you have in your code becomes the database key to find the right translation. And if you have lead, 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 um, the way you can distinguish this is that with whatever you put as this extra X key becomes a second part of that translation key. And that way you can say, okay, lead uh, as, in as, as in dog or lead as in something else. Thank you. Uh, so, again, a number of use cases where you might need a specialized translation function. Uh, the most common ones, I mean, uh, many of those, I've written code for WordPress for a decade and I've never used uh, quite a few of those. So, but just as an example, when it comes to PHP, uh, you do have a variety of functions at your, translation functions at your disposal. Um, now, JavaScript, on the other hand, Translations in JavaScript only became available in WordPress, uh, I think about five years ago. Okay, so it's a, it's, it's new-ish. So when we talk about JavaScript translation functions, we shrink the list uh, sort of down to the essentials, but they work the exact same way as their PHP counterparts. Um, okay, so go and think about that very, amazing slide that I showed you earlier. Uh, we've, we've written our code, or we've written our theme or our plugin. We've used translation functions like we should. Now, the next step in that process is to generate a pot file, so that portable objects template file that'll be used as the basis for translators. Uh, there are a number of ways to generate this file, uh, depending on what your uh, preferred workflow is. <coughs> If you're a command line person, uh, there's a CLI command for that if you use Grunt or Gulp. If you want a UI, there's software like Poedit. Um, these are, I'm not listing favorites or anything, these, <coughs> excuse me, just a sampling. Um, and then if you actually have a theme or plugin that's part of the .org repository, uh, there's a way to generate a pot, a, a pot file directly from your admin, which is cool. And, Ooh, that's okay. You don't actually have to read what that is. I know it's tiny. Sorry. Uh, oh, I don't, and I don't know how to make it bigger. But anyways, that's what a pot file looks like. So um, basically, some header information, <coughs> and then this, uh, this, the various strings for translation: the original, and then um, a space <coughs> where the translator can go in and generate a PO file, which is basically you could just uh, make a duplicate of this, uh, translate those strings, and save them out into a PO file. So the naming convention, let me see if I can... I don't have this one pulled up, that was... So the, let's see. Absolutely. Oh, handbook. <laughs> see, lost in translation. Uh, I, it's, uh, Oh. Poly, oh, there we go. Ah, okay, it's okay. <clears throat> but each, there's a PO file generated for each locale. Uh, and the locale, the naming convention is the, the country code plus a specific locale code. So some languages say Spanish. Uh, there are many countries that speak Spanish. Uh, so you would have the country code then followed by the locale. So each, each profile gets that. Sorry, I didn't have that one at the ready. Uh, 
<coughs> okay, so then, yes, yes. So going back to generating the profile, again, several ways of doing that, whether it's uh, just duplicating the pop file or there are various plugins or software that you can use to do that. <coughs> okay, and then the next step in that puzzle is, um, so think of the, the pop file is something the original developer does. The PO file is something the individual translators do. Now when it comes to translate or uh, to compiling, I don't know if you'll talk about this tomorrow, Toby, but general best practice is the original developer should compile their own uh, files. Hopefully translators have good intentions, uh, but the whole point of translations is you probably as the developer don't speak all the languages that you're receiving translations for. And so just to make sure that there's no malicious strings, that sort of thing, uh, you would want to generate your own files <clears throat> that are actually gonna be presented to a user. And there are, again, multiple ways to uh, generate that based on your preferred workflow. Woo! Still, still, we're still here, still, still with me? Okay. <coughs> Perfect. So moving on, the last piece of the puzzle, so to speak. So we've got the developer involved, the original, the OG developer. We've got the translators involved. Uh, and then it's the job of the developer to then load these translations. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and based on whether you're using uh, PHP or JavaScript, there are different functions you do for that. Uh, so Mo files, those contain our PHP translations. There's load plugin text domain, load theme text domain, and load child theme text domain uh, that you would use respectively if you're uh, working with a plugin, a theme, or a child theme. <coughs> and then for the JSON files, uh, there is a set script translations. Let me actually, I'm so glad you asked. <coughs> so this is a, a, a plugin, um, not a theme, but the way that plugin works, um, we are loading, there's that load plugin text domain, and on, if. I need to update this code so I reference the actual code base, or excuse me, the function reference for these. Um, but it, it takes a variety of parameters, um, and we're basically pointing it to, in this case, a, a directory in the plugin where language files live. And here I just have a sample uh, in this particular one <clears throat> in um, Mexican Spanish. And you would hook that to init. And I only know that you hook it to init because I've read the documentation thoroughly. <laughs> and that's, that's the recommended spot. Well, I guess within a theme, you put the equivalent of functions to it. Yep, exactly. So uh, a lot of things you have here you can actually skip as long as you, uh, in the top of the uh, plugin declaration, say that it uh, requires at least 4.6 or a later mm. version for WordPress, then WordPress will automatically load this for you. Oops. Um, but it will load it from, uh, but it will load it from, uh, VP content forward slash. It's a different languages. directory. Yeah. Uh, 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 languages forward slash themes or plugins. And then your exact plugin or 
uh, things <coughs> like. So it's important that you, uh, for your um, text domain, sorry, it's early in the morning, for, for the text domain, only use exactly your slide that you have been appointed, because it, that is the one you have to use for this. you're coding a theme um, kind of for your own use, you would need to um, use a function. Yeah, then you need to do these yeah. loading things, and also you need to make sure that these uh, centrally located things won't come and overwrite your translations. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the <coughs> traditional way of doing that is to make sure that you have a unique enough name for your plugin and theme, but since... Um, about two years. Um, you can make a declaration in the top of the plugin at least um, <coughs> where it says don't bother trying to look for updates or translations and so on. Because um, I don't okay. remember exactly. You bring up a really great point about uh, if you are creating bespoke themes for clients, uh, that's a different from distributing themes or plugins for mass use. I uh, actually ran a poll on, on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. Uh, do you use translation functions in bespoke, whew, bespitting, <laughs> <laughs> in bespoke code? Uh, and the, the general consensus was yes, uh, because it's just muscle memory. Like your, that double underscore function, maybe you will never ever be translating strings in a, say, a theme that you're building for a client. <clears throat> But just as a best practice of something that you're in the habit of doing, um, do it. Now, do you actually need to include translations, generate a pop file, load them? Again, based on your client's use case, maybe, but maybe most of the time not. Um, so it really just depends on what the, the final delivery is for, for that code base. Um, So I just showed, was showing you a GitHub repo. Um, here's the URL to that. And if you would like to um, submit a PR to that repository with a translation just to practice the process of generating a PO file. And if you want to go ahead and compile the Mo or the JSONs uh, files, you're welcome to do that too. Although I'll double check your homework to make sure you're not sneaking in something Something sneaky. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking, I spit on stage and now I just snorted. I am a delight, people. <laughs> um, yes, so this is just a, it's, this is about as simple of a plugin as it gets. Um, I created this for a, a LinkedIn learning course that I did on this topic. And basically it adds a to the top link um, at the bottom of a page, and one of those links is is uh, generated or output by Java with JavaScript. The other one is is with PHP, um, just so I could demonstrate what it was to use. Um, do, 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 do. To the top copy, that's classy right there. <coughs> Uh, but just to demonstrate what it would look like to use a translation function, there's that double underscore in PHP, and what it might look like to use a translation function in JavaScript. There's that double underscore again. So if you want to look at this as just like the most basic, basic example, your, uh, how all the pieces fit together, uh, you're welcome to use that as a resource, <clears throat> or even do a pull request. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so our session may be coming to an end, but your learning doesn't have to. Uh, so th there's several resources I wanted to point out. The best ones are gonna be directly on wordpress.org. Um, if you go to based on whether you're interested in plugins or themes. Um, the plugin developer handbook, and then look for the section on internationalization. 
Uh, likewise, the theme developer handbook, look for the section on internationalization. Personally, I find the documentation is a little more robust under the plugin section. So even if you're not doing plugins, I would still reference that particular handbook. And then yours truly does have a course available uh, on LinkedIn Learning where I get into a little more detail on, on all of these goodies. <clears throat> and then when it comes to actually doing, if you're super inspired to, uh, to translate WordPress into other languages, um, go to makewordpress.org slash polyglots, not polyglollies or however I spelled it earlier when I couldn't quite see what I was doing. Um, that is... Uh, that is the team that is responsible for translating WordPress uh, and it would be, if you are multilingual, that would be a really great no-code way to participate in giving back to this open source community. Um, and then translate.wordpress.org is where the translation magic actually happens. Uh, so we've got a handful of minutes left. I know I appreciate that we've asked questions along the way. Does anybody have Others they want to throw out there? No burning questions. <coughs> okay, well in that case, uh, I will give you the gift of your time to run, get some coffee, or do what you need to do. I'm just making your food request Oh, fantastic, thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, well, thank you guys. I appreciate your, your attention and your uh, participation, and happy word camping. Um, I am, I, I had it on the slides. I don't know if it's tiny enough to see. Uh, mostly on Twitter, at CDills. So feel free to, to hit me up or, or connect with me there. So thank you guys.